Our next speaker, you know, I've known for many, 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 many years. And it's hard to decide what I would like to, you know, introduce him as. Uh, there's so many uh, fascinating things. Um, aside the fact that we're twinning today, when he comes on, you'll see we have the same shirt and practically the same glasses, all right? But also, perhaps this is uh, in, in his attempt to up his hipster street cred. He started to build his own bikes. He even builds the bikes, like the wheel from scratch. He told me how you do like you, the spokes are just giant screws and you could true it up. He gets a frame, he builds the wheels, he does the whole thing. It's quite impressive how he could build a bike. I ride bikes, I can't even fix them up. He's building it from scratch, which is really, really awesome. So please welcome giant R nerd and bike hipster, Mark. So I am going to talk to you about today, uh, about basically how I use R to manage all of uh, my teaching. Well, R teaching, because this is really joint work with Abhijit, and I'll get to that in a second. But how I use R for creating content and managing my university course uh, and doing a whole bunch of different things. And uh, obviously, the the impetus for this this talk is, uh, as many as those that know me um, know, I, I've been teaching at uh, Georgetown and at GW for several years in the data science program at Georgetown and the uh, Master of Science of Business Analytics at, at GW. Uh, I've been teaching a big data class for several years and now I'm teaching more. So more recently, I've been teaching a data this class. But um, so I'm gonna share with you what I've done. Uh, again, I'm Mark Weissman. Uh, I am a cloud solutions architect at Microsoft. Our nerd, as Jared said, uh, meetup founder, data community DC founder, and just uh, all around uh, kind of data geek. So what I'm gonna show you today is uh, I'm gonna show you a little bit about using sharing in. I know uh, other, other speakers, I've seen some of the other slides today and many people are using sharing in. Uh, I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail just because uh, I, I'll just share with you the, the, the tips and tricks that I've learned along, along the way to, to make kind of nice, really um, slides. Same thing here is uh, I'll be showing you about the sharing in or sharing in or sharing in, I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. Um, sharing in themer and sharing in extra packages. Uh, I'm going to show you how we build the course website with the still. Uh, and then I'm going to touch on these two other packages a little bit uh, because these are packages that we've either looked at or used or are looking into to incorporating into our workflow. So uh, a package called exams and a package called uh, GH, uh, GH class, which is really uh, a wrapper around the GitHub API for, for doing a lot of real repo stuff. And then I'll talk about some of the challenges that I've, I've found along the way. What's the inspiration? Well, like I said, as a as a as someone who's been teaching now for a while, I'm always striving to become a better teacher, and I always I'm always striving to have good materials. You know, I want I want slides that are clean. I want slides that are easy to understand. I want slides that are easy to maintain. Uh, long gone are the days of doing massive PowerPoint slides, or at least I I, I haven't built. I have to build them for work. <laughs> because I work at Microsoft. And um, I wish I could do more stuff with like something like this when I'm at work. But I've been, uh, I've been tinkering with some of the many packages for doing slides over the years. So uh, Beamer, like our, I, I started with RSweave a long time ago and try to build Beamer presentations. And that, you know, just writing LaTeX is just a royal pain in the butt. Uh, you know, toyed around with Markdown with uh, to build some of the, I think, not Reveal. Uh, there are some of the other web frameworks. But anyway, I've been using Sharon for about two, three years now. Uh, I really like it. And also, also like, you know, some of the things that we see out there from the RStudio community, uh, excellent educators. So folks like uh, Garrick, Adam Bowie, I think I'm pronouncing his name right, um, Allison Hill, uh, Manet, uh, and Jenny Bryan. You know, these these are folks that really publish a lot of great material. And I've drawn a lot of inspiration from, from these materials. And so, so, you know, again, just trying to incorporate best practices or what I think are best practices into my teaching. So I'm going to start with sharing it. Um, so... Obviously, right, so why sharing it? So we know sharing in is a package that was written by Yui, uh, and basically it takes our markdown and it converts it into really beautiful, I think it's reveal. I'm not, don't remember the underlying uh, JavaScript framework, but you know, it allows you to incorporate code and stuff like that. But why sharing it, right? Because it really, I think it renders beautiful slides, of course, using modern web technologies, you know, using CSS, using kind of the modern web stack. You can combine code and output. I mean, we know that right from our markdown. Um, it's code based so version controllable. So again, like I said, I, I really don't want to get into maintaining uh, uh, slides that much. So I want to try to have something that I can just manage and maintain and not necessarily rebuild from scratch. 
Uh, why sharing it? Because it's web-based. You can host it within a website. It's easy to display. Again, using a browser, you don't, you know, you can just display it using a browser. You need a server, but that's a whole other thing. You might need somewhere to host it, or you can actually even run them locally. Um, the thing is, uh, why the way I use it is I really want to use it in building modular content. So, and I'll get to that in a second. But one of the things that um, that personally I like about using sharing it is that it really forces me to think about the content and the layout of the things that I want to show, you know, rather than just like doing drag and drop and just throwing everything to a slide and have a slide that really is not, um, it's just not pretty or it has a lot of material. Like it really forces you to sort of stop and think. Um, and then, I'll, you know, we don't need to leave R. And, and I always like to reference Jared's old talk of like, uh, you know, R for everything where you can do everything from within R. And, and as we go along, it seems that we can do a lot more with R these days. So obviously we're all R lovers here. So I don't need to tell you that. Um, some of the challenges though. So as long, you know, as much as it has its good things, it also has its, not its drawbacks, but there are definitely challenges. So the first one is there is a learning curve. So if you've just written plain markdown, um, that in, in and of itself is not a big deal. It's just kind of how do you incorporate the, there's the syntax with the three dashes and like the difference and sort of things and just kind of how to get everything controlled. But uh, the other thing is, even though you don't really need to know CSS uh, for display, it really helps if you do, just because you can obviously tweak it. Um, going back to it's like forcing you to, to think about what you want to show, the, the, one of the challenges is any sort of graphic that you want to put into your slides, uh, you need to have an advance, right? So it's not like a PowerPoint where you can draw a circle or draw a square. So you can't really, you can't, I mean, I, I, there might be some JavaScript tools that allow you to like draw on demand. But, you know, besides the point, I have to go and think through what I want to show. So if I'm doing screenshots, I have to go get the screenshot, save it as a PNG or GIF or JPEG or whatever. Um, and then like just have the, the graphics in advance. And as I'm thinking of building the presentation, um, you know, of course, adding more material to my images folder. No WYSIWYG, right? So obviously you're writing code and you kind of go into this write, render, write, render, write, render until you get it right. Um, sizing the draft graphics can be a little bit tricky. Um, you know, with experience, you can figure out, like, you kind of know the size of, of the graphics that you want to show and embed in the slides. Um, and then like, it can be really slow for me writing a nice set of slides. It takes a long time. And I really struggle with getting content from my head onto paper, not nothing new particularly, but you know, as I'm doing things, I pull in images, I'm all doing sorts of things. So those are the things, you know, these are, these are my thoughts. Um, and, you know, please, I'm happy to, to hear comments or, or thoughts if, if you've been using sharing and kind of what you find good and bad. So obviously, you know, like everything in R, uh, the defaults are actually pretty good. So when you build a slide with the defaults, this is what you get, right? This is the, this is when you start a, um, you, you go to R Studio and you open up a new R Markdown slide and you, this, uh, you choose the, the sharing and template, this is what you get. You know, you get a slide. Uh, looks good, you know, it's pretty, it's kind of black and white. This is just the default template that RStudio does for you. So I, I don't love it. You know, I want to make this prettier. I, I, I don't know if pretty is the right word. I just want to change it. So uh, what I do, right, is um, I use sharing in themer and sharing in extra. And I'm going to show you how, how I actually do that. So basically, this is what my lecture template looks like right now. Um, so I'm going to go through, these are just sample slides. So this is the title slide. Uh, you see the blue background. I chose the colors. Uh, I like looking at the color wheel. So I try to use complementary colors and that sort of thing, uh, different font and sort of things like that. But this is kind of the headings, you know, level one, level two, level three, four. That's uh, italic text. And, and then the highlighted text is in uh, kind of a magenta. And then that's the same slide, but with inverse colors, right? So when you use the inverse class, you get the uh, inverse background where you can define what that is. Again, how did I get this? I use um, both sharing and uh, themer to create the theme and sharing an extra. Actually, I'll, I'll show you what sharing an extra does, but here's some, a little bit more about the slide. So other things that we use in these slides are incorporating tables. So uh, using cable, uh, K-A, uh, it's part of the Knitter package. So just rendering, uh, tables into HTML so they look nice. But then one of the things that we use, which is really, really cool, especially for our, our data visualization class, and like I said before, um, I don't know if Abhijit's on, but Abhijit Dasgupta, who also started the R Meetup group with me many, many, a uh, long time, many, many, uh, a decade ago, if not more, um, he, he and I are co-teaching this class. So we do a lot of the development together. And we what we do is we actually teach the class in both R and Python. So we 
we focus on sort of the theoretical aspects and, and the how, I'm sorry, the what, and then the how we do it in both in R and Python. So we do a lot of slides that look like this. We, we show a slide and we, we show something here, you know, how to do something in R and then using the panels, right, which you get from uh, sharing an extra. So you can, show, you can show similar code that does the same type of thing uh, with, within a panel. And it makes it really, really easy to show the different. You're not showing them side by side, but at least you can switch and talk about the, the intricacies of either language. The other thing that we use a lot um, is just do something like this. So we have something where you know, this, is, uh, this is a unit square data frame that I built. It's just some random numbers between 0 and, and 1. Um, and then you know, here's a bunch of ggplot code. And then what happens is actually the output on the right shown over here. All right, so we so this is just part of the template that we use. So a lot of this functionality you see here, I'm going to highlight a couple of things. You see how when I hover over the code, there's a little triangle on the left-hand side and the actual code changes color. That's provided by sharing an extra. It's, uh, I don't remember the exact function, but this is really useful because rather than like selecting or something, you can just kind of hover over and highlight a piece of code uh, in a dynamic sense. And then the panels are also provided by sharing an extra, so the ability to be able to do this. Okay. Um, all right, let me move on to the next slide. So this is what sharing an extra does for you. So it gives you a lot of functionality. If you look at the repo, uh, it's not on CRAN. I think you still have to install it with, uh, on GitHub. But it, it basically, it's a lot of wrappers around advanced CSS functionality. Um, like I said, you don't have to know CSS, but if you do, it makes it a lot easier. But uh, Garrick has written these packages, uh, both sharing in Themer and sharing in Extra. Uh, and what we use, right, is the panels and, oh, tachyons. So we also use tachyons. Tachyons is like advanced CSS, which is coded with like a dot command. I don't have examples to show you, but that's the other things that we use for, for, for this. Um, so how do I, gen so as you see over here, right, there's actually three themes in the slide deck. The first one is the theme of the slide that you're showing. So the black background with the purple. Uh, the second is the theme that's inside this default. And then the third is the theme of my, of, 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 our, of our template. So each of these was created with a different theme. How do we create the theme or how do you create the theme? So it's really easy. You use the library uh, sharing in themer. And then you can use either pre-built themes and then overwrite some defaults. So the one I'm showing you here today is this one right here. What I did is I ran the code. This actually outputs, I create an out file called argov2021.css. And the thing is, once you generate a CSS file, you can use it over and over again. You don't have to have the th sharing in theme or code in your presentations every single time. You can All you need to do is create the CSS once and then use it over and over again. And I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, this is the theme, right? So on the right-hand side, you see the YAML header for the file. So this is the, the YAML header for this slide deck I'm showing right now. Um, as you see here, here's my CSS, which I generated before. And then I'll, I'll get into other things. I use other non-defaults, and I'll explain what those are in, in just a second. Okay. Um, so strategy for building slides. Like I said, I really want to focus on building modular content. Um, because I don't want to have a huge, you know, when you start writing these really extensive, when you have 30, 40, 50, you know, even like 60, 70 slides, it can be a real pain to manage. So the way the strategy uh, that we've adopted, and I've been using this now for quite some time, I found a blog post, I have a link to it at, in, at the end that showed you how to do this. And I just found this phenomenal. So what I do is I actually write the slides in a modular approach. So I write kind of blocks of slides by topic. And then, so if in one lecture I'm going to have multiple topics, I have a top-level slide, uh, a top-level RMD, which calls child RMD files over here. So basically, this is what the code would look like, right? So here, this would be the YAML header for the top level. And then what happens is all I would need to do semester to semester, right, is just change the YAML header or, or something along those lines. I don't have to go back and edit, you know, or find anything here. So. The way this works is you have uh, a top, let's call it a top level RMD. And then you run this uh, R chunk where you say R child equals, uh, you know, topic one dot RMD, topic two RMD. I found this to be really, really useful um, and helps you actually organize your, your content in a much better way. Um, all right, so this is kind of around sharing in. I have some additional thoughts about that later, but those are kind of the things. So create your own theme use modular content. And, you know, as, as you do this, you have to kind of understand the, the, uh, the tricks of incorporating images, whether you're going to use an uh, HTML image source, or you're going to use uh, the, 
the knit or commend, which I, I always forget what it is because I rarely use it. Um, all right, for distill. So one thing is making the content for, for the slides for the lectures. The second thing is uh, hosting is Now we, at Georgetown, we use Canvas um, and LMS. At uh, GW, we use Blackboard, another LMS. Um, what I've done, and I kind of see this being done elsewhere, is, is many structures just create a website. Uh, so this poses a couple of different challenges. One is you need to have the content in the LMS, but you also want to have the content separately. So managing content on both sides can be kind of a pain. But anyway, how do we generate the website? So let me show you this. Um, so we use Distill. So Distill is a, uh, I guess Distill is a, is a framework for scientific uh, publishing. Um, and it's, it's a format somebody created. I don't know who created it, but again, using modern web stack, it, it's clean, it's, uh, it renders easily. Uh, and then you can use a lot of helping functions. So you can use that, you know, R dis or the distill package for R leverages the distill framework, if that's what it's called, to build a website. And the defaults are actually pretty nice. So what I'm going to show you here is, um, again, what is distill? I, I just got this from the distill website over here. But then this is what our website for the course looks like. So this was actually generated. This is hosted on Netlify. Um, you could either do this hosting this on GitHub uh, pages or Netlify. We chose Netlify because you can't really uh, host the distill. GitHub pages is static rendering, and this is static rendering too, but it, it, it's, it's a lot more flexible. So we're, we're hosting the website on Netlify uh, with the still. But, you know, as you can see, you get kind of a, I, I don't want to be a web developer. Like, I just, I just don't. I just want to do something that looks good, that's accessible, that's easy to navigate. And that sort of thing. So we have the calendar, we have the syllabus, right? And then here, like when we go to the slides, you click on, on, a, on a given week. We probably want to do a better job of maybe not calling it week by week, but something along those lines. So, you know, here you see the slides for, the, for our class. And this is all hosted on the website. Um, so how do you start with a building a distill shell? Library distill, create website, my website, and so on and so forth. So it's pretty easy. That gives you the scaffolding for building the website. Um, so... How do you create the navigation? So you have to have the underscore site YAML file for the website where, so this is what our, our navigation looks like. Uh, we have the, the left nav bar over here. We've got the, uh, the menu stuff over here. The, the only drawback to this is we actually have to edit it. Every time we add new content, we actually have to go in and yet edit the site YAML, which is, can be a little confusing. Sometimes we add a slide and we forget to add the link. So, you know, we are at week 4, 13 and we, we didn't do that. So we actually have to go back and do that. The content is there, it's just, it's not linked. Um, how do I bring it all together? So we created a structure, a repo. All this goes into repo, in a GitHub repo. So the, the, what, the way we, we design it is that the repo itself is private. Uh, but because we're using Netlify, right, you, you can actually host. If You need a premium account if you're going to use GitHub pages to do GitHub, uh, to, you know, to host a file with Git, GitHub pages. And Netlify, your, your repo can still be private. The website, obviously, is going to be hosted and shown. But the way we designed it is we have, you know, this is a repo class for the class. So we've got admin here. We have our, our roster, or a bunch of other things that we need to have. Uh, Quizbank, this is where we use a package called our exams to generate some uh, questions that we upload into Canvas for the online quizzes. Slides is where we actually, um, this is sort of our current architecture. This has had many iterations. But um and then obviously the README, which is the README repo, uh, the site YAML, and then the index. So this is the site YAML for the website. This is the index RMD for the website. So the index RMD is at this top level directory. When you render the website, everything we, you know, everything gets actually rendered in the public website directory. But the index RMD has to be over here. Obviously, any RMD files related to the website itself. Within the slides directory, right, this is what we do. So we create a slides directory like lecture one, lecture two, and so on. And then we have a directory called format. Um, again, not sure if this is the best way to approach this because within each slides directory, uh, there, I'm sorry, within, this, within the, this upper level directory, we have a format directory. In that format directory, we, you see it's at the same uh, level hierarchy as the lecture, lecture uh, directories. We have out, the output YAML. Uh, we have a bunch of setup options, RMD, and a bunch and CSS, if anything. Um, I'll get into that in a second. In the lecture directory, we have a subdirectory for data, uh, if there are any data files that we're reading in, a subdirectory for image, if we have any images that we're reading in. So obviously, like with the lecture sort of self-contained, but you could have, you know, still top level R markdown and a child level R markdown. 
Um, so for the setup options, uh, we, so what we do here is in, in this directory, so as you see here in the lecture directory, what I do is I create a sim link to the output YAML in the format directory. That way, all of my slides have the same format and I don't have to copy over that output YAML file because if I change it, if I copy it over and I change it, I have to change it everywhere. This way, I, 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 don't, know if, I don't know if there's a better way of doing this. Uh, I'm sure there is, but the way we've done it is we just have the formatting in the format directory. So everything is sim linked to that format directory. So if something changes in the formatting, all of, and we, you have to rebuild the slides, obviously, but um, every, you know, it, 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 it picks it up. Uh, these are some of the setup options in the RMD. Again, the way I treat this is I treat this as a child. So in every sharing and top level, I read the setup options. Here I have some, some things I've learned to use along the way, like the knitter options and some of the different options. We render a lot of HTML and JavaScript content for things like D3 and that sort of thing. So uh, Abhijit found out what we need, these HTML uh, tools.preserve.raw. Not sure what it does, but it needs to be there to work. And the other thing I do here is I read in all my different packages. Um, this is the output YAML. So what I do normally do is we do um, we do this. We do self-contain equals true. The reason for that is because that generates a single HTML file for the output. Now, those can get really big if you have a lot of, that's kind of the drawback is those can get really big and they could cause some issues with your GitHub repo. Um, I do the incremental, uh, I, we don't use the incremental slides to change the, the slide number of like the 16.9 ratio and that sort of thing. So that's kind of how we create the content uh, for, for the website and for the slides. Uh, GitHub, we use GitHub for the assignments. So for GitHub, right, we use, so what we've been using is we use uh, GitHub Classroom and GitHub Classroom is basically an automation platform on top of GitHub that allows uh, instructors to create uh, an assignment and then students accept the assignment. And what that does is it creates a copy of the assignment using uh, a source repo. It, it sets all the permissions. So you can do that via GitHub Classroom through the website, uh, like over here. Um, but you can also do that with GH Class. And we're actually starting to investigate the use of GH Class because it, it's within R and we can call the GitHub API over there. But uh, you know, why do we use GitHub Classroom? Because uh, you, know, that's, you need to know version control. Like you just have to, <laughs> and it shows a real world workflow. It's easy to use. You know, we can use pull uh, pull requests. We don't really use those because the grades actually go in the LMS. So as you see, we're trying to manage a bunch of different platforms separately. Um, exams. So this is a package that allows you to create using markdown files or, um, or LaTeX. You can actually write questions that you can then import in this is a specific format. It's called QTI. But then you can, that's kind of a standard format. And then you can import those questions into the LMS. So we, we can write the questions just using R and, and, and LaTeX and, uh, or R Markdown and then uh, load the questions up into Canvas. It's a little bit time consuming because you have to understand the syntax. Um, but again, we want to version control these things. Like we went just in the leverage this because at the end of the day, these are all text files. All right, future work and challenges. So there's a lot here to manage. Uh, a lot of the, our workflow is, is manual. So we actually have to generate the website. It's all in the same directory, the same repo. We have to generate this website in one set of files. We have to generate the slides in another set of files. So we're thinking through ways to like fully automate this where once you like say you create an RMD file or you knit it or every time you Every time you knit the website, it picks up new content. Like there's all these sorts of things that you need to do. We have to add the links to the, to the site YAML. Um, you know, that's the kind of thing that we want to do. Uh, I would love to integrate this with the LMS. Uh, that's really not up to me. That's up to the school. So the school needs to give us API access to the LMS, which probably is not going to happen. Um, and then, you know, figure out the best kind of structure for the repo, especially because we have all this modular content. What happens is when you're trying to render files with sharing in and you've got content in one place and images in another place, and then you have a website hosted, it, it just, you have all these reference, these, the, when the HTML is rendered, I think it uses a relative links. So if you have things all over the place, it, you, your stuff doesn't render right. So we need to find a way to do this in an easier way. Uh, here I kind of have a bunch of useful resources. These are all of the blog posts that I use to learn a lot of what I showed to you today. Um, it's great content. So there's Garrick's website, there's Manet's website, which is linked over before. Uh, there's Allison Hill's uh, introduction to Sharingan, which is amazing. Um, and then again, I'll, I'll, I will post the slides on GitHub and I will send out, I'll share the link with Jared. Folks, I hope to see you next year in New York and in DC. Um, 
you, I think all of you know that I'm Jewish. So in Judaism, right at the end of the major holidays, there is a blessing that says next year in Jerusalem. Well, I'm kind of saying the same thing here, like next year, either in New York or in DC. So thank you very much.